you've come out to your car and you go to start it in the morning because it's super frosty. Just after a few minutes that your temperature isn't rising, like I'd let my car run for about 10 minutes. That's probably a good example that your thermostat has failed and the spring is staying open and the water circulating so the engine won't heat up. So today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to um, remove your old thermostat and install a new thermostat on a Lexus IS250. My name is Josh from JDM Right Hand Drive. We're gonna be working today on the Lexus IS250 and we're gonna be replacing the thermostat. So if you have a thermostat um, that is faulty or failed, um, most likely your signs are gonna be when you start your engine and it doesn't heat up within the first couple minutes, most likely your thermostat is stuck open and the, the coolant is circulating through the radiator rather than um, being stationary inside the engine, giving the chance for the engine to get up to normal operating temperature. Um, it's kind of frustrating when it's 25 degrees outside and it takes 10 minutes for your car to heat up and you're just freezing on the way to work. Not to mention, without having your engine at the proper operating temperature, it's not designed to do that. It can cause premature wear and other issues to go wrong with the engine. I don't have friends. I got family. Let's take a look. I have picked up a brand new um, Toyota or Lexus thermostat. So this is a brand new OEM part that I ordered from Amazon along with the matching Toyota high mileage coolant and I'll have a link down below in the description for you guys. So um, that's the model number there. And this is uh, the coolant, super long life. This is the pink stuff, that's what you need. Um, because when we crack this off, um, we're gonna get a little bit of coolant that's gonna leak out. So I'm just gonna put a little pan underneath to try to catch what falls out. And we'll just pull this all off. It looks like there's just a couple of uh, 10 mil bolts and the new gasket comes with this system. We'll put it all back together. It should only take about, uh, I don't know, half hour or so. So let's get to it. I'm gonna remove these covers here and along the front here. So I have a few plastic uh, clips and things that need to be removed from those little uh, fastener holes once you get those out. This just lifts right off. It's gonna give us more room to work in here. So I'm gonna take off um, this air induction uh, piece and then that'll give us accessibility to the lower radiator hose down here. Got this 10 mil bolt loosened up here. So let's pull that up and out. And this will just lift pretty much out and away. Makes a night and day difference to get into this area. So you guys can see we've got just a couple of 10 mil nuts. There's one here. There's one here. We've got a hose clamp here. Um, I'll probably just I'll probably just pop this uh, water hose off here just to have enough room to manipulate that out and around. All right, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this hose clamp here. There we go. I would have preferred to have it uh, facing upright like that. Go ahead and put a coolant pan underneath the car to catch the coolant as it trickles down so I'm not contaminating the environment. This coolant line off. So you're gonna have a little bit of coolant leak, but not a lot. We've got a couple of 10 mil nuts here. I'm just gonna use a uh, ratchet wrench to take these off, remove this line so I've got a little bit more space to work. And there's actually a third, so you guys can see the orientation of that sitting on the car um, like this. So there's another one which is all the way down in the center underneath here, so I'll pop that off real quick. I decided to loosen uh, the couple 10 mil bolts that hold on the overflow reservoir so I could have better accessibility down below to that last nut. Okay guys, so I've got that third nut off here. Now the thermostat can just be pulled out. Good look at the old thermostat, it's out. So you can see kind of the workings of it. You've got the lower spring and then the upper spring. So, got the new one here. Let's 
So we'll go ahead and slip that in and you can see there's a new um, O-ring gasket seal on there. So nothing is required besides just slipping it on and retightening the bolts. And let's also get a look. I wanted to get my camera in here to get you guys a bit of a look, kind of what this area looks like. So that's what that area looks like down there. So you've got, you just see your little three studs there. So let's go ahead and slip the new one in, put it back together, top off the system, and be ready to take it for a test drive. All right, we can start attaching our 10 mil nuts. Snug these down to factory torque specifications and refer to your factory service manual for that. I'm not a master mechanic, so I don't want to be held liable for telling you to torque things down to a specific spec when Toyota and Lexus has already done all that for you. I'm just here to show you guys the information to help you get the job done yourself. When you get this bottom one on, um, if you just push with one hand this little coolant line out of the way, you can easily put it on with the other hand. Um, let's go ahead and finish tightening all these up. And if you guys don't have a set of ratchet wrenches, I would highly recommend it. They're pretty much a must to get in any of these tight spaces. I'll have a link in the description down below for a set of those, as well as some other basic hand tools I'd recommend to get the job done. Now that these are all tight, we can reattach our water lines to the top and bottom. And then we'll reattach our hose clamps. So you guys can see I've got the hose clamps connected on the bottom and the top. All retightened in the way that they were. I'm going to go ahead and drop the coolant overflow reservoir, overflow reservoir back down into its little nook on here. Alright guys, now we can top off the coolant. So we'll start by just filling this up here. And once we get this full, we'll top off the overflow reservoir as well because that's showing a little low. I don't have a extra funnel, so I'm just going to spill a little bit here. I'm usually pretty good at getting in the hole, so... There we go. These little squeeze, work it all down in there. I'm also going to top off the um, overflow tank because it's a little low. There we go. So I've got that to the max fill setting. I used about two thirds of a gallon of coolant just by doing this job. My system was topped off before, however my overflow tank was a little low. So you guys can see we're all the way to the top here. And I'll run this and make sure it's, you know, all filled and there's no leaking. So what we'll do here is put the cap on. I want to inspect um, around the thermostat housing that that new gasket isn't leaking. I'm just going to spray all this down with a little bit of water first. And you can see we've got our reservoir all the way filled up to full here. Okay guys, so we're out here and we're inspecting the bottom of the thermostat housing. And there are no signs of leaking from anything that we did. This hose clamp, that hose clamp, or anything. So. We are good to go. Let's take her for a test drive. 29, I just started the engine and we are at cold. So let's drive the car for a minute and see if it heats up like it's supposed to and if the th new thermostat actually fixed the issue. It's nice and warm after about three minutes after changing the thermostat. Where before it would take about 10 minutes of me physically driving the car before I'd feel any warm air come out because the old thermostat was defective and worn out after 15 years. You know, the car's 15 years old, so. 
Been driving for about two minutes. I've got the hot air on and the car is up to temp and it's uh, heated up. So this is good because usually it's cold for about 10 minutes. So job well done, thermostat was a win. Uh, now I'm off to go get the alignment done. So I just got new tires on it today and I'll go ahead and close the video up at the uh, tire shop with you guys. Well, I got my stock wheels back on the car today and I got some new Falcon all-season tires because I'm going to be giving the car to my daughter here in the next like six months. So I'm going to get the alignment done because I could feel it was off and I had toe wear on the front tires before. I'll walk over to Walmart, make my way through all this frozen slushy snow, try not to fall down. So, thanks for joining me. I hope uh, you got something useful to change your thermostat. The cool thing with the Lexus is I love the uh, rubber O-ring because you don't have to use RTV like liquid sealant and wait for that liquid gasket sealant to dry before you know refilling everything so makes the install process a heck of a lot easier so really good design really good engineering quality from Toyota after changing the oil I just wanted to go for a quick test drive and the car feels super smooth the acceleration's good new intake filters in and thermostats in and new tires are on four-wheel alignments done car is you know being maintained and ready to drive for a while again that's it thermostats all done took the car for test drive drives fine all the cladding's back together car turned out good and alignment is all done new tires are on plenty of tread so hope you guys enjoyed today's video with the Lexus IS 250 for more content, uh, you guys uh, subscribe down below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave me a comment. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.